Hello and welcome back to Math 301. And today I'm going to tell you a bit about this computer software program called Sage Math that will be very helpful to solve lots of problems in combinatorics. So here let me uh, share my screen with you. So uh, I especially like this program because its major developer was somebody that graduated about the same time as I did from grad school. Uh, his name is William Stein, and he went to the University of Washington and started, um, he became very frustrated with the computer programs available in math at that time because they were closed source. And so he couldn't check uh, whether the code was really fully accurate or not. So he developed this um, math program called Sage Math, and it was very strongly supported by the National Science Foundation. And at this point, it's, it's wonderful because it's freely available and it's open source. It's a Python-based program, uh, but you can just, uh, you can access it from any web page by going to sagecell.sagemath.org. But if you want to do bigger jobs, you then need to make an account with Sage. So um, there's some nice reference manuals in Sage for combinatorics. I think especially this first one, which is quick ref is a, a good one, but I, I just want to show you how, how this program works. So if you don't want to process a line, you put a number sign in front of it. I'm sure lots of you have a lot of experience with uh, computer programming and maybe some, for some of you this is new. So, um, so you can access this at all different levels. So often we want you to try to simplify things like binomial coefficients and factorials algebraically, because often a lot of the factorials, they just cancel off and it's good to understand, understand that. But at some point you might want to know an exact numerical answer. So for example, let's say you wanted to figure out which is bigger, bigger, six factorial or three to the sixth. Then I will uncomment out this line and we'll figure out what is factorial six. And you see down here it says 720. We could then compare with three to the six, which is 729. So three to the six is bigger than six factorial. Another method is to write out three to the six minus factorial six greater than zero, and then uh, this program will say true. Um, you can then evaluate any binomial coefficient. So this is k, um, n choose k, you put the n first and the k next. So this is 10 choose six. What is 10 choose six? It's 210. And you can also ask more in-depth questions, like for which k is the binomial coefficient 10 choose k, which we write binomial 10 k, bigger than 100? So in order to do that, we'll put uh, brackets around this because we're going to be making a, a list. So we're going to look at um, uh, all binomial, oh no, sorry. We're first going to look at all binomial 10k as k is in the range 10. Let's do that. And you see you get this list of numbers. So this is, um, let's think about what this means. So this one here is not 10 choose one, it's 10 choose zero. So one thing to notice is that when you write range 10, what it really does is to index the, the k, um, um, I'm sorry, I should have written K here. The indexing for uh, uh, range, um, uh, let's do a different letter, M, okay, starts at, starts at zero and ends at M minus one. So when we do this list, there are 10 numbers showing up, but they start with 10 choose zero and they end with uh, 10 choose nine. So it might be a little better to do binomial 10 K for K in range 11, and then we get all of binomial coefficients. We'll see in chapter four that these are a row of Pascal's triangle. And so we can see, well, which are bigger than 100? Well, the first one here is this one, 210. And that happens when k is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So k is 4, 5, or 6, 
Oh, excuse me. 120 is also bigger than 100. So we start with k being 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 7. And here's another method. We could instead make a list of all k. For k in range, we decided 11 was better. If a binomial 10k is bigger than 100. And so this is going to tell us which k's give big binomial coefficients. And you see there that it's the 10 choose 3, 10 choose 4, 10 choose 5, 10 choose 6, and 10 choose 7. So those are some of the combinatorics commands that we've already seen and how you can do them on Sage Cell. There's some other things that are going to be coming up in the next several weeks. For example, subsets. So if you have a set of four things, one, two, three, and four, you could try to find all the subsets of them, and then let's list them out. So you see here we have the empty set, sets with one element, there are four of those, sets with two elements, there are six of those, sets with three elements, there are four of those, and then there's the entire set with all four elements, there's one of those. This next thing is, I think, incredibly useful. I'm, I'm sorry I never saw it before. OEIS stands for the Online Encyclopedia of Integer Sequences. And so if you have a bunch of numbers and you think they fit a pattern, but you're not sure what pattern they might be, you can just type them in. And, um, and it says, most likely, this is the sequence of numbers of the form 2 to the n minus 1. So there might be some uh, other, other options, but so it might be that there's several outcomes here. But this is incredibly useful to be able to identify what formula a sequence of numbers has. And one thing to be careful about this, I'm going to plug in this um, sequence. Notice that 2 to the n minus 1 when does that equal 1 is when n is 1. So this one that we just did for s started with n being 1, 2, 3, and 4. But now notice if I do this sequence, 3, 7, 15, 31, you get the same answer. So uh, you have to be careful about the indexing on the variable here because this sequence, 3, 7, 15, 31, there we would start with n equals 2. All right, another thing we'll maybe do later in the semester is partitions. A partition, let's say you have 20 pennies and you uh, want to divide them up among various people. The partitions are the way you can do that. You could give all 20 pennies to one person. You could give 19 pennies to one person and one to another. I guess the order doesn't matter here, so it, it's maybe better to think about giving pennies and putting them into piles rather than giving them to people. But these are all the partitions of um, 20. Look how many there are. There's so many. Um, so we, if we wanted to figure out how many there were, we could um, write, so here P is a, a set or a list, and um, if you put dot cardinality, we can figure out how um, there are 627 partitions of 20. So in general, uh, the formatting of Sage, way, the way it works is that if you want to do something to this list P, you often put a dot and then put the command of what you want to do after that. And often you need um, these empty parentheses at the end. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the Fibonacci numbers a lot um, in chapter six. So here are the first uh, fi 10 Fibonacci numbers, starting with n equals zero. Remember how you find those numbers is that you start, usually you start with one and one, and then to get the next, you add the previous two. So one plus two is three, two plus three is five. So you can write down lots of Fibonacci numbers. Here's a, uh, here's a way to make a syntax for something a little more complicated. We're going to define 
another sequence. This is going to be the sequence of, similar to the sequence of Lucas numbers. And what we're going to do is, for the starting input, say that we're going to define this function L of n. If n is 1, we want to return 2. If n is 2, we want to return 1. And otherwise, we want to take the sum of the two previous values. Uh, the first time I, I ran this command, I got an error. Let me show you the error. I said, I want to figure out what L of n is for n in range 4. You see now it's, it's, it's having trouble. We get an error. And what is that? Usually when I get an error, I'm not that, um, I'm not that tech savvy as you already know. So usually when I get an error, the, I, I just try to think about what, what would make it better. And what I realized is that, oh, range four, then we started with n being zero and I never defined L of zero. So let's just fix this to say L of n for n in range four if n is greater than zero. And then we get, we get some of these Lucas numbers. Then we could find more of them if we wanted by making the range, range bigger. Okay, so that's, that's a basic introduction. I think you'll find this very useful during the semester. Um, this also is very helpful for other classes like Math 360 or maybe mostly Math 360. And so number theory and combinatorics classes use this a lot. But you can also plot, you can do uh, anything that you can do in other computer programs like uh, Macaulay or Magma or um, what's the other one? Blanking on the other one, but um, you can do with Sage, and it's it's this nice freely available program. So, so we may assign you to do some things with Sage at some point this semester. Okay, see you next time.